Hi, this is Fred from Obedia. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, Prasonis's Fire Studio Project, a uh, multi-channel uh, professional audio interface. Uh, comes with uh, eight mic pre's, uh, a bunch of uh, other line input and output options, uh, including uh, the ability to plug uh, instruments directly into uh, the interface without the use of uh, a direct box. It's got digital I.O., it's got MIDI, um, and it all connects to your computer, Mac or PC, via Firewire. So uh, let's have a look, see what's in the box. Okay, just having a look at what's inside the box here. Let's just open it up. Got some uh, foam. Uh, copy of uh, Cubase 4 LE, or LE4. Uh, some included plugins, a uh, a cool uh, Cubase LE4 uh, how-to uh, tutorial DVD, and here we have the drivers, and uh, here we have another DVD full of uh, some samples and loops. Uh, we'll take a look at what that is. This would be the uh, the owner's manual, firewire cable, power cord. And right in here, the unit itself. Okay, here's the unit itself, which uh, right out of the box, uh, it's got a nice heft to it. Uh, like all Prasonis uh, devices, uh, has a really good build, really good feel uh, to it. Uh, feels like quality. So right on the front of the unit here, we've got our gain controls for our eight inputs. And also right on top here, uh, a phantom power on and off. Uh, for each of the pairs of mic pre's, so they uh, they turn power on uh, on and off uh, in in pairs. So that would be for one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. Uh, here we've got a headphone jack uh, with a separate uh, volume control for that, and a master volume for your main outputs. Uh, on the back here, we've got the uh, the power jack, our firewire connections, a digital uh, spdif, which is just a stereo. Uh, input and output uh, connector, our MIDI in and out, uh, our main outputs right here, and then um, eight general purpose line outputs, uh, which is really interesting to me uh, because uh, I do a lot of surround work and uh, it's important to have these days up to eight channels available for uh, the possibility of 7.1 mixing. Uh, and we also have two um, inserts here, uh, which uh, I'll explain later. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is have a look at how the Fire Studio project installs and integrates into our studio. Uh, we're going to go through uh, the driver installation and maybe have a look at some of the plugins that are included and uh, see how quickly we can get it up and running uh, with our particular application. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is put in the Prasonis driver's CD and see what happens. Okay, it just uh, starts up automatically. I'll click next. That path looks like a good install path to me. I'll click install here. Okay, what you see here is a Windows warning, which is pretty obnoxious. It's uh, Windows telling you that uh, this software hasn't passed their uh, logo testing, uh, which is uh, pretty much meaningless. If it's um, a piece of software that you're installing the, and you know where it came from, and in this case we do, we don't worry about this stuff. We just click continue anyway. All right, so it seems to have done the install and it's asking us to restart the computer. Now at this point I haven't plugged in the Fire Studio project yet. Uh, it's rare that uh, an install uh, procedure would ask you to uh, uh, have the device plugged in before you install the drivers which is what we're doing now so it's uh, it's gone through the driver install and uh, yeah we're going to uh, restart the computer okay we've restarted the computer and I've got the uh, Fire Studio project ready to uh, be plugged into the computer uh, I've got its power turned on and uh, I'm going to attach it uh, to its FireWire connection right now <coughs> Okay, we hear the sound from Windows that something's been plugged in. 
the first thing uh, that we're going to see is this found new hardware wizard, which is the uh, Personas uh, Fire Studio. Now, uh, we don't want to search the internet because we know we just installed the driver, so I'm going to click no, not this time. And we see here that uh, it identifies the device. And we're going to choose install software automatically because we know that the drivers have been installed already. And here's that warning again from Windows that we're going to completely disregard. We're going to say continue anyway. Okay, so we're going to click on finish. And that seems to be it. What we see down here in the system tray is the uh, Personas fire control, which is now turned blue, I notice. It was red before, so I'm going to right-click on that and open Personas Fire Control. Okay, here's the uh, fairly substantial-looking control panel for the uh, Fire Studio. And it says here, uh, click here to engage Mixer. And I don't think they mean there. I think they mean over here. So let's have a look at that. Ah, okay, there we go. All right, this uh, clearly gives you a comprehensive control over uh, software control over the uh, Fire Studio. So I'll dig into this a little bit as, after we uh, have a look at how it integrates uh, with our application. In this case, I'm going to be uh, booting up Cubase 4. So I'm going to close this and boot up Cubase. Let's have a look at that. OK, this is Cubase 4 uh, opened up. To set the audio device in Cubase, we're going to go to Devices, choose Device Setup, and click on VST Audio System. And right now we can see that the uh, ASIO driver is actually set for the default uh, setting uh, for Cubase. So we're going to change that and look for our Personas Fire Studio. There it is right there. We're going to agree to switch. and. It looks like it has uh, taken it. Okay, so now to get to the settings in the uh, Personas Fire Studio, we're just going to click on that in the list there. And we see all these inputs and outputs. And I'm just going to click on the Control Panel button here and see if we get that uh, Personas Control Panel that we saw before. All right, we're not getting it there, so I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to go back down to my system tray here. Some uh, devices prefer to work this way. Let's open up that control panel. Okay, and there it is. All right, so next thing I would do when uh, setting up is have a look at my VST connections in Cubase. And there's my inputs tab, and I can see that it's automatically chosen uh, the first two inputs uh, for my stereo inputs. and. Uh, same thing for my output. So that is pretty straightforward. No muss, no fuss uh, from our device setup um, after choosing it here. So that looks good. Let's just go ahead and uh, create a new project. And I'll just create an audio track, mono, and we'll see what we get here. So I uh, created my audio track, stereo in, left. Yep. All good. That's a pretty straightforward setup, uh, and we like that about the uh, Personas equipment. Uh, usually, it's pretty straightforward in the install uh, area. So I'll dig a little deeper into the control panel in our next episode. Media, technology.